Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Shogun Mohammed. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa has ratified and issued Law 33 of 2017, amending Article 31 of Law Decree 15 of 2002 regarding the Shura Council and the Council of Legislative after its approval by Parliament. The amended law stipulated that without breaching any tougher penalty under the penal code or any other law, anyone who violates any of the provisions stipulated in Articles 22, 23, 25, 26 and 27 of this law is punishable with at least three months incarceration and not exceeding one year and a fine of at least 300 dinars and not exceeding 1,000 or both penalties. The amended also stipulated that without breaching the criminal liability of a natural person, a special corporate person is punishable with twice the prescribed fine for the crime if he committed any of the crimes stipulated in the aforesaid articles in the preceding paragraph under his own name, account or any of his representatives. Anyone who violates any of the provisions of the provisions of Article 24 of this law is punishable with at least six months and not exceeding a two years incarceration and a fine of at least 500 dinars and not exceeding 3,000 dinars on both penalties. His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister and each of the ministers according to their domain have been tasked to implement the provisions of this law effective from the next day following the date of its publication in the official gazette. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa chaired today the weekly cabinet session at Qadaybiyah Palace. On the occasion of Eid Al Adha, His Royal Highness congratulated His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the people of the kingdom and the Islamic nation, wishing them many happy returns. He hailed the services and facilitations provided to the pilgrims by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, led by the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. The Prime Minister directed the ministries and governmental bodies to boost cooperation and coordination with the governors and governorates to enhance their role in establishing an integrative relationship with different entities and to activate societal partnership and the support of the government in the services provided through identifying the needs of governorates' residents. His Royal Highness urged the ministries and government service entities to manage resources optimally, especially those directly related to citizens, to ensure they receive the required services without delay. He also directed the Ministry of Health to speed up patient appointments and to provide the equipment and specialized cadres that minimize waiting time for follow-up appointments and medical checkups. The Prime Minister urged to provide a stimulating atmosphere that will prepare students academically and socially and will motivate them to make further achievements that enhance the quality of the National Educational March. His Royal Highness congratulated the students, administrative, educational and academic authorities in all educational stages on the new school year of 2017-2018, wishing them success. He also hailed the efforts of the Ministry of Education to serve the Educational March. The Cabinet also discussed the Ministry of Education's administrative and academic preparations for the new school year. His Royal Highness directed the Ministers to visit Al Hura and Ghidaybiyah to identify the needs of their citizens and to complete service shortages, urging the Ministry of Labour and Social Development and the Ministry of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning, as well as all related entities to step up inspection campaigns in the mentioned areas to guarantee that leased real estates are consistent with the executive regulations of the municipality's law and the relevant resolutions. The Cabinet hailed the achievements of the cooperation between the executive and legislative authorities in the third session of the fourth legislative term. Among them are amending the Constitution of the Kingdom of Bahrain regarding the organization of the jurisdiction of the military judiciary and the legislative authority, passing 33 decree laws since the commencement of the fourth legislative term, as well as 34 important laws. 
Israeli Highness the Prime Minister thanked the executive and legislative authorities for their cooperation and thanked the Minister of the Representatives Council and Shura Council Affairs, ministers and officials for their cooperation with the legislative authority. The cabinet referred to the Representatives Council a draft law to amend Article 4 of Decree Law 11 of 1985 regarding the protection and support of local industries. The Cabinet referred to the Representatives Council a draft law to amend Decree Law 55 of 2002 regarding the Shura Council's internal regulations. The Cabinet referred to the Representatives Council a draft law about Ushura's interests. The Cabinet discussed two proposals, one about the inspection of poultry and imported eggs and the other regarding the prohibition of shrimp fishing and approved the government's response prepared by the Ministerial Committee for Legal Affairs in both regards. Facts and documents gradually reveal the conspiracy that Qatar has plotted against the Kingdom of Bahrain and its people. Qatar, with its financial, media and logistic arms, made the first spark of the unfortunate events witnessed in Bahrain since 2011, but the wise leadership of His Majesty the King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa succeeded in addressing this conspiracy and bringing Bahrain back to safety. The strings of conspiracy. Qatar has made the first spark of the Kingdom of Bahrain's 2011 events. Day after day, the symbols of Qatar's conspiracy project and the unfortunate events of 2011 in Bahrain is being revealed, which aim to overthrow the legitimate regime in the country to achieve Qatar's goals, which goes hand in hand with the Wilayat al Faqih project in the region. Chaos, destruction, Conspiracy and planning, the Qatar regime have invested in people with no moral goodness for Bahrain that the leadership of the kingdom has handled with wisdom and firmness considering the circumstances. Qatar made the first park that ignited chaos and vandalism in Bahrain. It used social media to incite sedition through a comprehensive plan relying on financial, media, and logistic support for violence and terrorism in Bahrain. The Strings of Conspiracy dates back to the 26th of January 2011, which is one day after the protests began in Egypt in line with the so-called Arab Spring. The first spark ignited movement following a Twitter account owner called Sahab al ahbar has published an article on Bahrain online website in which he called for setting a date to rally in Bahrain, coinciding with the 14th February 2011. Later on, in a clearly planned conspiracy, he moved to phase to specify the location of gathering. Bahrain Search, Investigation and Cybersecurity Authorities tracked the account, which turned out to be created in Qatar through the internet protocol address, also known as IP address, of the network provider. Heavy monitoring and access to Bahraini political websites and forums have been detected by Qatari government authorities such as the Amiri D1, the Amiri Guards and Qatari Interior Ministry. At the same time, suspicious accounts such as Sahab al ahbar were spitting their venom from Qatar. This account, among others, were calling for chaos and ripping apart civil peace and harming Bahrain's social fabric through organizing sit-ins and rallies under the titles of Dignity Bank, Dignity Belt, and Manama Flood, seeking to weaken the state inside sectarianism and divide the society in order to achieve the big plot, which is overthrow the regime. The Qatari conspiracy went on with field steps reflected by the cyber plotting to create chaos alongside an instigation scheme by Al Jazeera channel with the aim of making the crisis international and put Bahrain under pressure 
with the claim that is part of the so-called Arab Spring countries in political and legal form. The Qatari Al Jazeera channel dedicated its programs and news bulletins to broadcast calls to influence the audience for the aim of incitement, creating chaos, and fabricating facts. Everybody in the world, United States, European Union, all the Arab leagues, all the Arab countries, please do come here to help us. The field conspiratorial movement was followed by political steps through coordination with the now dissolved Al Wafaq Society as communication was between the highest power in Qatar, the Emir's advisor, to ensure the distortive side of the plan by spreading media lies and fabrications to influence the local and international public opinion. <laughs> من من الشخص اللي انا اقدر اخلي حد يتصل فيه وياخذ منه المعلومات هذه لان حتى للجزيره ما عندنا مانع. In this step, Qatar plotted its interference in Bahrain through the project of overthrowing the regime and Hamad bin Jassim continued to communicate with terrorists to complete the strings of the conspiracy. وهذا هدفنا الرئيسي وارجوكم تثقوا فينا. What happened in Bahrain was not a public movement. It was a systemic destructive plan that has been plotted and executed by Qatar through its security arms and official bodies by devoting its staff to follow up and coordinate after making the first spark of the events. Meanwhile, Minister of Information Affairs Ali Rumehi, Sabir Qatari Media led by Al Jazeera Channel, are attempting to distort the image of the Gulf Cooperation Council and to push for a popular movement to call for a withdrawal of the six country alliance. In remarks carried by Sh Al Shaq Al Awsat newspaper, the minister said that the current Qatari media policy deliberately concocts scams and fabricates historical and political fallacies in order to build up resentment among Qataris against the GCC and reduce its stature. He said following its attempts throughout the current crisis to distort the image of the GCC countries, the Qatari media is now twisting the image of the entire alliance through baseless allegations. He added that Al Jazeera has never been an advocate of Gulf unity or of Gulf integration, saying that since its launch, Al Jazeera has broadcasted news programs and reports questioning the significance of establishing the GCC and has allowed guests on talk shows to attack the council and its leaders. Al-Rumehi stressed that the GCC leaders were keen on the unity and cohesion of the council within its original frameworks and constants, mainly security, stability, and the non-interference in the domestic affairs of other countries and the non-involvement of people in political differences. The fourth e-auction for special vehicle registration numbers, organized by Mazad Company in cooperation with al Arabiya Auctions, concluded yesterday. The auction included 30 vehicle registration numbers and the total revenue stood at 62,700 Bahraini dinars. The total number of bidders reached 121, with 4,002 people viewing the e-auction. The organizers from Mazad and Al Arabiya auctions affirmed to continue providing more vehicle registration numbers for people to obtain in a fair manner. They affirmed the importance of developing specialized e-auction mechanisms, noting the wide participation and strong competition in the fourth edition of the e-auction. They also underscored the success of the previous e-auctions. Good evening and welcome to the business news on the Bahrain International Channel. I'm Bara Abdallah. And let's start with the local stocks. The Bahrain All Share Index has closed at 1,300.67 points, marking a decrease of 1.44 points below the previous closing. As that been said, the decrease was in the commercial banks and the investors traded mainly in the commercial banks. 53 transactions included 300, 737,030 shares worth 177,253 Bahraini dinars. 
This week's 70 million Bahraini dinars issue of government treasury bills has been oversubscribed by 120 percent. The bills carrying a majority of 191 days are issued by the CBB on behalf of the government of the Kingdom of Bahrain. The issue date of the bills is 30th of August 2017 and the maturity date is 29th of November 2017. The weighted average rate of interest is 2.45% compared to 2.54% for the previous issue. On the 16th of August 2017, the approximate average price for the issue was 99.385% with the lowest accepted price being 99.359%. The Central Bank of Bahrain CBB has announced two entrants into the regulatory sandbox. Tramonix, a London-based forex cash management solution for businesses, and now Money, the Dubai-based account for remittance service for low-income workers in the GCC countries. The Bahrain Regulatory Sandbox provides a virtual space for companies to test their financial technology-based solutions and is open to existence CBB licensees and other local foreign firms.